everybody welcome to the video welcome to the channel dirt perfect behind me somewhere there there he is he's getting the 850j loaded up for something completely unrelated we are taking his cd 500 uh, we're going to try not to take the that uh, we're going to get that up out of the way without making his building taller is the goal that's how we're starting off and then we're going to get that case minotaur to try it up out of the house well, step one is all is, is uh let's see if this rig starts for us and maybe maybe that should I don't, I don't know it's been a while since i've been here let's see well I'm... all right well let's let's see if let's see if this one starts maybe maybe we, maybe we can get new batteries everybody said the batteries will fix it they said All right. Oh. Double check, make sure you don't have anything hanging on that basket. I think we're clear. Yeah, we're clear up there. All right. Let's go get this picked up. And, uh, Matt have been working on an awesome project down here and uh, they've been using the Minotaur down here let's just go to three let's see uh, figure out where he wants to load this at I think we're just gonna load right here Do you want to introduce the what we're doing today <laughs> this is uh, it's got to be quick Mike I, I can't I can't I can't claim it as mine this is a demo unit from case this is the DL550 Minotaur on steel tracks. And this thing is a beast, Captain. Looks like, and then we got... We got a blade. Got goes, cuts, goes under the machine, too. Yeah, this is their claim to fame. I shouldn't say their claim to fame. This is what makes them different than anything else. Is it's got a C-frame, so it actually does push a lot more like a dozer. You'll get the hang of it. It's got a little bit of a different feel, but it's... Uh, it's impressive, Captain. It's okay. impressive. All right, that's listen. I, I gave you 30 seconds to talk. Oh, man. Mike, I think that's... I don't... Do, I mean, I'm not, I don't work good on time schedules. All right, let's see if we can't, uh, I don't know. We're doing something. All right, first thing, why don't you open the side window so I can talk to you? Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, it does have the front door. Got to keep it closed or it will not do anything. Oh, that's claustrophobic. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> first knob down from the touch screen is your start. If you want to crank her off. Oh, and down, down, that's down, fancy. down, right there. This winner. Got to hold it there. There you go. You're up and running. Now, you got to put your seatbelt on. Oh. Is next. And we on. always wear, our, that's why I know how to work this so well. We all, oh God. <laughs> yep, there we go. This is when five minutes later clips. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you look right below the screen, there's an ISO dozer button. Uh, go down right there. Got it. See how it's an ISO? Yeah. So that basically means that's the, I'm going to call it the skid steer or CTL mode. Okay. Uh, which you got the bucket on it now, which is what you want to be. To load this on the trailer, we need to put the blade on it first and we'll come back for the bucket. So okay. if you look right up here, this very top switch uh -huh. is your unlock. Okay. So you got to hold that down. Okay. You're going to see two little red things pop up right here whenever it works. Okay. We're going to do the blade. So hold unlock. that. Yep. A whole lot of safety. I like it. Yep. There you go. And that's it? Yep, now you can just kind of roll back out of it just like a normal skid steer bucket and then walk up to the blade over here and I'll walk you through that. There we 
there you go so as soon as the top hits kind of slightly roll back go on forward a little bit more there you go keep keep driving forward as you roll back now there you go there you go keep driving forward a little bit keep driving forward keep driving forward there you go did you see your flag go down over there oh yeah up on top there yep so now lock your uh lock your pins Beeping. there you go oh i see yep. dozer flow you see it says pattern it says dozer yep gotcha now that does a whole lot of things with the machine it rewraps all the hydraulics and it also cuts your horsepower by about 25 percent, so you can save some fuel okay so now what you need to do is do what they call the um the c-frame retract which is the button below it that was the longer pieces that went yes underneath. so okay. they got they're on hydraulic pins so you retract those and once you uh i think you hit the retract button which is this side okay uh you toggle that same switch over there and then it'll give you a confirmation up there on the screen they're retracted okay you guys if you wave at man behind the scenes out there just wait, just say hi to him hey <laughs> you guys haven't seen him in a while it's hard to get good video around here it says they're ready to retract confirms they're ready to retract oh there you go there you go Tells you they're attracted there. Lift your loader arms and you'll feel it kind of fall into place. Just don't move, just lift straight up. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It's got guides underneath there and it'll guide those pins. Right there you go. Help it. Now you're going to basically do the opposite. Hit that button. Ready to extend. You're locked in. That's it. That was easier than I expected. Um, now, the last step would be hooking up all the hydraulic hoses, but since we're just going to put this on the trailer and yep. undo it, I don't think you want to. You want got to, to shut do it that. down, and hook the hoses up, or does it matter? You don't have to, but we have been. Gotcha. Uh, if you push and hold, push and hold on these. Yeah. They'll release the pressure. Okay. Looks good over here. the ripper on the back of this when you don't get one of those fun rides off the trailer yeah. go ahead and hit your retract your c-pins which is the top hit your lever over there should give you a confirmation yeah nicely retracted. done so now just lower it down should lower the c-frame down see so it going down there Perfect. Go to it just barely touches that front. All right, now hit your, yep, you're on it. See the little flags pop up right there. So you'll just kind of roll and back up at the same time. Yep. You got her. You got her. Nailed it. You got a yard and a quarter bucket on this beast it will move some material let me tell you he's got his flags up right there which means he's ready to accept the bucket he's gonna get her got it you're on it perfect
perfect. All right, so we got her up there, slipped a little bit on this deck. We got a lot of slime and millions and, well, it's just wet. I don't know how else to say it, but that's okay. We got her on. We're gonna throw some chains on her. I'm gonna pull up just a little bit. It'll kind of flop these ramps up. They're kind of dug down. Pull up, it'll get them loose for me. You know, all I gotta do is just toss them and you're good to go. By the way, check this out. A subscriber sent several of these to Dirt Perfect. I think Man Behind the Scenes got one. Not Your Average Millennial got one. Dirt Perfect got one. The kiddos got one. Look at that thing. It's the 304. Subscriber made that ornament. Is that not the coolest thing? Also, Case hooked me up with this shirt, which is pretty slick. And huge shout out to Case, by the way, for blindly accepting Dirt Perfect's offer when he said, by the way, I've got another YouTuber that would like to try it out questioning your judgment a little bit, but I definitely appreciate it. I gotta go get some batteries for the danger cam, which is the camera that goes places cameras shouldn't go. And then we'll get back here and do some work. Oh, can I hold you and do this? Yeah. Over here, it's got rabbit turtle, but it's like a gear. Like you got multiple. You hit it once, you go a little faster. You hit it again, you go a little more faster. It's not just like a one speed or two speed, it's got several different speeds, which is pretty handy. puts it in park for you that's pretty handy kind of does its own little slow idle down too which is kind of handy too so if you're new to the channel this is the youtube yacht project we're building a steamboat themed shaped rental cabin in the middle of the woods because it you know I, I don't know but we're doing it and we're pouring a concrete floor on top of that and i don't want to spend twelve hundred dollars for a pump truck because that's how much they cost here so what we're going to do is take we're just going to dig a big borrow pit right here this is the material we're working with. It's got some clay. It's got a lot of these little rocks. It's got some bigger rocks and the deeper we go, we'll get bigger and bigger and bigger rocks. And we're just gonna build this out to where we can get a concrete truck in here and try to save me a little bit of money anyway. The original goal was to use the Ford 555 backhoe that I'm rebuilding, but unfortunately it had a couple more issues with the radiator, so it's not ready to do this. And since this was available, I thought, what a cool opportunity to try it out. All right, we gotta get all this stuff out of the way and then I've got some fabric we need to put down. This is all from out here over. That's all clean stone backfill for the foundation drain on the backside. And even though everything we're putting in here will get pulled back out at some point, I don't wanna have to dig out a whole bunch of stone after the fact. So we'll just put some fabric on there. And whenever we reshape this, that part will kind of already be done and ready for us. Just one less thing we've got to redo in the future. We're just gonna pin this thing in place with some screws into the foam for now. Uh -huh. And that should, should do what we need it to do. Keep that stone nice and clean. One last thing we'll have to go back and touch up. Try to get a little smooth transition into there. That's a little better. So the pedal is set up as a diesel pedal right now, which is kind of cool. You can uh, you can change that. There's all kinds of features. Well, what are we doing with half buckets? I don't know.
Anytime I had Dirt Perfects, he used to have a Kubota 90-2. Now he's got a Takakuchi 240, I think. But uh, he had rubber tracks, and this is what always made me nervous. This is our material where we're at. It's just rock, rock like this. We have this, and then we've got real sharp limestone too, and it always made me nervous operating in this with those rubber tracks. I always felt like I was gonna tear it up. I'm not worried about it at all. Not with these steel tracks. Pretty easy, pretty intuitive. This is the first time I've used it. Seatbelt, and then... Uh... So the parking brake's on right now, but I wanna show you. It's probably gonna beep at me when I do this. But kind of similar to a dozer control, if you push forward, it locks in forward. You pull back, it locks backwards, which is pretty handy. The controls are definitely similar to a dozer. You got quite a bit going on here. Like I said, gear shift up and down, horn in that handy. And then you got some blade controls over here. Um, looks like some dozer angles here. And then you got your ripper control over here. Throttle up. It's starting to rain, but just a little bit. You can see my hand over here, my right hand over here. Yeah, I think you can. I'm trying to look at the screen, see if you can see it or not. break up that rock a little bit but I can just pull that back and I'm going back just kind of like a dozer This thing moves some material. Oh my gosh. Look at that. We're gonna keep going just a little bit more. You can see all the rock we're going through. No issues. We're gonna kind of daylight out and daylight this out just a little bit. I don't want a big pit holding water. We might move the, that was a drone landing pad. I would say approximately seven months ago. We could probably relocate that.
think that'll do it. Something to keep in mind. You'll notice I kind of pushed off high and then smashed it down instead of just cutting off. Keep in mind that the concrete truck, one, is going to make that sink more. And two, concrete trucks have to have gravity to get all the way to the end of their chutes. Your pour, if it's higher than what where the truck's going to pull in, you're going to have the less amount of chutes you can run out there. So you got to be a little bit higher if I want to use all four chutes. That's what we run here, four chutes off the front of the truck. So we're higher in elevation. We got her packed down a little bit. They'll settle a little when that truck pulls up, but I think we're going to be okay. We should, from here, be okay without a pump truck. We're going to have some raking around that corner, and we'll have some raking down that end. But I think, I think we can do her just fine without a pump truck. I might grab a few more scoops and fill this in real quick. I also just kind of want to try that ripper out. Now, we saw this is all pretty much fractured rock already there's nothing really solid here but now i kind of want to back up and do a couple passes with the ripper i just want to see how it feels behind the machine actually ripped that stuff up pretty good kind of surprised me a little bit there's a backup camera or a camera on the back of the machine I'll show you here there's a camera right here that looks down at the rippers when you're inside the machine and you engage the ripper that camera turns on so you can see what's going on back here but it's kind of a more of a by feel thing anyway and they are adjustable height wise and you got five options. You just want to run one in the center if it's super hard rock or something like that. Kind of a cool feature. Yeah, that's definitely got me sitting a lot better. I think we can get out there pretty good now. Not have to rake quite as much. I'm happy with it. Real happy with it. And when it's all said and done, because I know some people are going to ask, if this kind of Slope on around is what we're going to go for. So kind of how we're cut right there. You know, take that all the way across. All that will go out and we're going to truck it over the house. I got a low spot I need to fill in. And there'll be a dock that goes out to tie it all in. I want to get that thing loaded up and see if we can't get it trucked to my brother's new property today. And one other really random thing. I'm not even getting here. If you scan this QR code, it takes you to instructional videos. Kind of clever. You'll notice the uh, ripper's still up. They've got this little feature in here. You open this magic door. There's a little button back in there. What's the ripper down for you? Mm -hmm. There's also, you know, master switch and uh, jump connection, which is pretty handy. Close the magic door. Oh, my God. 
Okay, so we made it here. There's enough room for a car to go through. Like I said, we're in the middle of nowhere here. If there's one thing I've learned though, even if the only person lives on that road lives in California and vacations here once a year, the time they need to get through is whenever you're offloading. I guarantee, yep, there you go. I guarantee it. Yep, they'll be all right, they'll figure it out. Anyway, so this is the property he built. We're, uh, we're gonna do some road work here. There's a, an old, rotted fallen down cabin back there we got to kind of do some cleanup work with and we're going to try to get a little bit of a road in here trying to work on that next week but the first step to this project oh yeah see they made it that's a kentucky plate ma'am you are in the wrong state the first step we'll be getting a culvert in here we called in locates we're kind of waiting for those to show up the phone company called and said there's nothing down this stretch of road i would imagine the same for power and water but we called them in just in case see if we can't get that thing off there one thing if you got a slick trailer deck if you park downhill a little bit it means the ramp section is a little bit less steep that way well, a little bit safer so that's kind of why we're angled downhill we had to turn around anyway get my chains off here whoops well that's a good reason to back your machines on huh all right That tree, and that tree is a tree of heaven, which is invasive. That one's a black locust, which is kind of choked out anyway. They got to come out to widen this out. Anywho, let's see if she can't shove them over real quick. That was way too easy. That thing came out fine. Pretty decent sized root wad on that. I'm just gonna leave that there for now and I'm not gonna take that one down yet because we only got so much room to work with. So we gotta get the 304 out here and I'll, when we get the 304, bring the saw and I'll kind of cut that up, get into piles. We'll carry it back somewhere where he can burn it in the future. That'll give us more room to get that one dropped. No sense of crowding ourselves in yet. Also, super random thing, if you're pushing trees over and your bucket has teeth in it and that tree leans left or right and you don't want it to, it's going to pull you with it because you're locked in. I try to get it so the root wad breaks free and then I try to get underneath the root wad and shove the root wad up and do it that way. But I'm not giving you advice. I'm just telling you from experience, it'll grab hold of that and it'll take you for a little ride. It will. I, I promise you. Just got to get the gate coat here. Somebody put a daggone tree on it. There we go. No reason to be fighting all that. Oh, the plates look good. Okay. I'm a little worried not having that bucket on there. How this comes up here, we may slide around a little bit. Here's what I gotta get my head wrapped around. This hinges right there on that plate. And I was having a hard time understanding that. I gotta bring the top of that back almost to where it's even with these pins right here. Mike said it had a, different, a lot different feel than a dozer, but once you get the hang of it, it's not bad. I'm not doing a lot of work here. I'm just running the blades back. Just kind of trying to see how she feels. Also, just kind of see what material we got to work with back here. Yes, it takes a passcode. Oh, down here. It takes a passcode to turn it back on.
The machine is locked. Goodbye, case construction. I'm trying to figure out why the tilt won't work. It's a, it's a six-way blade. But uh, it's probably going to be because I didn't hook the hoses up yet. That's, that's probably going to be, I would think. Where are the hoses? Oh, they got a fancy little hose holder. Come on. They put some thought into this rig. That's pretty slick. Get this gate closed. We'll head home. Somebody hit this dang thing with a tree or something. Oh, somebody pushed a bunch of dirt up on it. Oh my gosh. So if you want to see that thing in a little bit more action and see how it performs, stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you subscribe. We're going to take some of these trees out, do some bucket work, do some dozer blade work with it too, which I'm excited about. And we're bringing the 304 out to put a culvert in right here. Try to get this place dressed up a little bit where he can at least get a truck in there. And he wants to get a roll off dumpster in there too. And yes, it's, it's chilly, but I needed to clean that windshield. It's not too bad. And I can't go without thanking Dirt Perfect for letting me use this. And of course, Case for letting him use it. It is going to be a huge help on this project. I'm going to flop them ramps up with a little bit of speed and I'm going to go home. I appreciate you guys watching. As always, we will catch you on the next one. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs>